The other misconception that I find is kind of pervasive and untrue is that that governments are, you know, inflexible, slow moving, mm. slow to modernize. Again, sure, there are examples where that is true. But what I love about working in Ajax is Ajax, I find, is like just the right size municipality um, where you will find innovation, right. modern approaches to problem solving. Uh, we're big enough that we have the resources to do cool stuff, but we're small enough that we're like nimble, flexible, and we can take risks that, that you maybe can't take in a really big bureaucracy. TOA Talks. Hello, Ajax. Welcome to TOA Talks. Today, Nicole Cooper, the town's director of legislative and information services, is joining me. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, Devin. Thanks for having me. So to kind of kick things off here, Nicole, um, we've been starting off with a little bit of an icebreaker. So if you want to choose a piece of paper from the bowl, pass it to me, I'll read it out. All right, all right. Okay, this is a good one. If you could take two items to a deserted island, what would they be? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's see how resourceful you are. Definitely my dog. Okay, good. I like that. Um, <laughs> I'm not my children. Oh, second one. Oh, like a chest of food. Hey, that's not bad. Yeah, because then you have to hunt, right? And wine, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, food or wine. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? I have a Bernadoodle. She's a like a big 70 pound. Uh, she looks like a big black bear. Oh, it's so cute. I love that. And how right. old is she? She is, I think she, yeah, she's five now. Um, and I always tell people that she's my favorite child and they think I'm joking, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah. First child and favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. All right. So now we can get a little bit into the real topic uh, for today after that icebreaker. So, Nicole, as the director of legislative and information services, you manage a department with various sections such as customer service, legislative services, bylaw services and information technology services. What does your day to day look like in your role in such a busy department? Yeah, so I always tell people that I'm really lucky because legislative and information services, which is kind of an obscure department title, but mm -hmm. it's a it's a real mixed bag department, which is really great um, when you're the department head because every day is so different. It's right. such a diverse service portfolio. You've just rhymed off kind of what that portfolio mm -hmm. entails. Um, and so it, it's kind of hard to describe like specific commonalities that bring all those sections together. But um, at a very high level, I find my day to day is just about solving problems right. um, and they're different from every section. So when we look at the technology division, it's thinking about like creative solutions to um, to the problems that municipalities are facing that can be supported by technology. So and when I say solving problems, I don't mean that in like a negative way, like no, yeah. things escalate and they're pain and we have to deal with them. Of course, there's some of that, but I'm talking about more um, the big problems that we face as local governments and what are the uh, like creative solutions to those problems. Um, how can we run better through the support of technology? Mm -hmm. How can we digitize some of our manual processes? How right. can we build tools so that the public can interact with us digitally instead of having to actually talk to a person? Some of these types of problems. How are we addressing the cybersecurity challenges mm -hmm. of the day? Um, that's really the technology sides of things. And then there's a whole set of different challenges that come with areas like bylaw enforcement. And you yep. know, our world is changing. So how are we dealing with um, you know, elements of the sharing economy, like uh, Airbnbs and the decline of the taxi industry and the rise of ride sharing? Wow. And do we need to regulate that? And um, so the day-to-day -day is just kind of like trying to tackle some of these big policy challenges and figure out how we can do it um, creatively um, and lead the way, of course, which is our, our motto at the town of Ajax. Uh, and then I, I guess kind of the last element of the day-to-day -day is um, just our department's involvement in sort of the political machinations and the governance of the town, which is really the most exciting part of the job, dealing with mayor and council. Um, it's really just all about relationships and how we can work together to get things done for Ajax. So that's kind of a high level day-to-day. -day <laughs> yeah, I don't snapshot. think you'll ever have a boring day then. And um, <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit off of what I was planning on asking you here, but how did you end up in this kind of a role? What was your journey? Oh, I feel like that will bore, bore your listeners. <laughs> but, um, okay, so yeah, I oversee this sort of mixed bag department, as I said, but I, I came up through like a very specific discipline, which is um, as a municipal clerk. So uh, my educational background is in political science. I ended up doing a master's in um, uh, public administration in a program that was very specific to local government. Um, 
and then I, I think my first job was working uh, the 2010 municipal election oh, in wow. the city of London <laughs> and some jobs that, that kind of like, you know, leads you into uh, clerk's department type jobs. And um, yeah, so it, it sort of led me to becoming a, a municipal clerk. And then uh, depending on the size of municipality mm-hmm. that you're in, municipal clerks tend to oversee other service areas that aren't specific to clerking. So things like bylaw enforcement and in my case, uh, information technology. So that was kind of the the pathway. Hopefully your listeners right. are still, still awake. <laughs> uh, so with that, um, what are a few ongoing challenges that you face as a department and how have you worked together to ever overcome these challenges? Uh, so yeah, the, the challenges that we face are kind of um, very particular to the sections uh, within the department. So um, if I think about something like the technology division, the probably one of the biggest challenges has been um, cybersecurity and the way that threats have evolved over the last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the solutions to these problems are not cheap. Um, right. Talent in cybersecurity is hard to find and it's expensive. We're competing with, you know, banks and private sector companies that can pay a lot for, for people with this skill right. set. Um, things like, you know, monitoring services and cyber insurance are very expensive. And this can be um, a hard sell sometimes in a political environment. You know, if you think of the people that we elect, they, their minds are, and I don't mean this in a, in a critical way, it's, it's the way they should be thinking. They're thinking about how we serve our community. And mm-hmm. a lot of the times that translates to hard services, rec programs, right. parks, slash paths. Things are very, very visible. Yeah. Yeah. The, like something like cybersecurity, it's, it's such like an obscure thing. We don't see the tangible benefits of, of the investments that we're making a lot of the time. So that's a big challenge. Uh, one of the, uh, just on the legislative services side, one of the things that's been a, a challenge, although I've enjoyed navigating it, is just the sweeping legislative changes that we've seen under yes. the provincial government. Um, some good, some not so good. Um, and so, so I'm talking about like massive changes to uh, the plan- municipal planning regime, strong mayor powers. Um, they've just completely challenged uh, the way that we always thought about how local government uh, functions. And I, um, and I say that objectively, I mean, I, there are definitely some really positive elements that I think come out of those legislative changes, but I'm particularly proud of the way that Ajax has been able to pivot and didn't really spend a whole lot of time sort of wallowing in, oh my God, this change is so hard. And how do we, right. how do we adapt? And it's totally different. And how are we going to do the budget this year? Like we really just got to work yeah. figuring Took it out. Took a nice ride. Yeah. Yeah. And, and are, you know, trying to just tackle it head on in a way that's going to like generate the most benefit for our organization. I'm really proud of the way that we've been able to get our heads around um, a changing world and and just like ride ride the wave. So you mentioned um, some of the legislative changes have been positive, some maybe a little bit more challenging. Um, what do you think has been the biggest positive for your department? So yeah, when we think about some of the legislative changes that we've seen in the last few months, uh, in particular, the introduction of Part 6.1 of the Municipal Act, which is known as the Strong Mayor Powers, mm. There's uh, there's a lot of strong sentiments about that about that, and I but I think we we always need to look for the silver lining, right? Mm-hmm. And I think there are some positive elements in those new parts of the statute that allow us to accomplish things a little bit more quickly um, in a way that we couldn't before. And I'll just give you an example of that. Um, we've been looking at some ways that we can change our council and committee meeting schedules mm-hmm. to be. Um, a little bit more conducive to good governance, changing, like tinkering with our meeting times to maximize public participation, make sure that the necessary staff are available. And ordinarily, that's something that would have had to flow um, as a direction of council. But Mm -hmm. we've been able to fast track that a little bit uh, with the strong mayor powers. So Mayor Collier issued a directive to our department to go ahead and start working on some recommendations to make these changes. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were were able to get on that very quickly. And, you know, having spoken with the other members of council, it's it's all really like great stuff that everybody's agreeable to anyways. So Mm -hmm. I think there and we're going to see more of these these examples where we are able to be a little bit more nimble and do things that are universally seen as positive a little bit more quickly than we might have been through sort of the the ordinary wheels of government. Right. And um, I have another slight curveball for you, but hopefully it's not too much of one. Um, You mentioned good governance. What does that mean to you? (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, okay. So 
this should be such an easy question <laughs> for a clerk, but it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's such a broad concept. I think I, I don't want to sound cliche here. We use words a lot like accountability and transparency, right. and but those really are like foundational concepts for good governance. So it's, it's about having a decision-making process that the public is invited into. That doesn't always mean having input into, but is able to observe the decision-making of process of government, understand it, access it, and then follow through on those on the decisions of council that like the that government is being held accountable for the decisions that we make and the things that we say we will do. And hey, that makes total sense. I like the way you phrase that actually. Okay. That, was, that was really nice. And um, so since we're talking about local government a lot there and good governance, what do you think might be the most common misconception about local government? Yeah, so I think I would offer two. That's a great question, Devin. <laughs> uh, the first one is I think when people hear the word government generally, it mm-hmm. conjures images of waste and excess. And we hear yeah. like these. It's the negative kind of coming out, right? Well, yeah. yeah. And these phrases stop the gravy train. And, and, and I think, you know, people have valid reasons for thinking of government in that way. Um, but I think a misconception is that that all governments are that way. And I would. I, I mean, I've been in local government for over a decade and most of that with the town of Ajax, but in some other municipalities as well. And I can tell you, it is a misconception. There is not a lot of waste or really any waste when you're in organizations this size. Um, I can see how like very large bureaucracies become prone to to waste. What I've observed over more than 10 years in local government is that the people that work there and the elected officials are very careful stewards of the public purse. And, you know, you hear people talk about, well, we're gonna, you know, new council's going to come in and go line by line through the budget. And I've mm-hmm. seen this before. And, and it, you know, that exercise does not generate this realization that there's waste everywhere. There, right. there is not. It's a total misconception. The other misconception that I find is kind of pervasive and untrue is that that governments are, you know, inflexible, slow moving, mm. slow to modernize. Again, sure, there are examples where that is true. But what I love about working in Ajax is Ajax, I find, is like just the right size municipality um, where you will find innovation, right. modern approaches to problem solving. Uh, we're big enough that we have the resources to do cool stuff, but we're small enough that we're like nimble, flexible, and we can take risks that that you maybe can't take in a really big bureaucracy. And right, a little just, bit less red tape. Totally, and I mean, there's so many examples of it, but like a really obvious one is the way we deliver elections. Like, and I'm not that's not specific to Ajax. Look at the way municipalities deliver elections across the province. A thousand times more like modern and innovative than what you see in in bigger bureaucracies, higher levels of government. We offer internet voting, telephone voting, um, you know, all kinds of like digital self-service options. Even if you just look at like our branding, everything about the way we deliver elections is done with the customer in mind. It's simple, it's convenient, and it's it's like a a policy area that I don't know how much attention it gets, but like municipalities should be so proud of the way that that they have figured out how to do this well. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's to me just like a really potent example of this misconception that we're like slow, old, uh, we don't do things in a way that's like right. customer centric. It's there's lots of examples like that where you can see it's just not true. Totally. And um, another misconception that I kind of just hear myself and I'm somebody who grew up in the Ajax community is sometimes, you know, maybe we, we don't care enough. And I think that's completely untrue, um, especially at the town of Ajax. Um, I think we care a lot about the communities and a lot of us mm-hmm. live within the community. So uh, the work that the town's doing or the region's doing is directly benefiting our own families in our own lives too, as well. So yeah. I, I do think that's another fairly large misconception I hear um, a little bit from folks. It's so true. Like you talk to your coworkers at the town of Ajax and like public service isn't just what they do. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's such a core part of our identities. And right. it's, it, it's a very like, dis, it's very distinct than what you find in, you know, our friends that work in the public sector, who's um, private sector. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, the, the, what did I say? Public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, the, in the private sector, but they're, the way that they like think about their goals, it's very, mm-hmm. you know, it's about, you know, profits and targets. And, you know, of course those things are important, but, um, we think about the public good. Right. And it's a real like distinct mindset and one that I think we should be proud of. Right. I, I agree. I'm, I'm very proud of it at all times. 
And um, with that, we were talking a little bit about Ajax's size there and how we're, you know, almost um, a great size for progress. Um, we are a lower tier municipality. Can you maybe explain to our listeners what it means to be a lower tier municipality? Yeah, sure. So in the context of Ontario municipal government, we have single tier municipalities like London and Toronto, where it's just like one level of government that offers the, the full range of services, social services, mm-hmm. policing, fire, everything. And that's normally larger um, cities, right? Tends to be. And then we have two tier municipalities like Durham region, where there are two different layers of government, basically. So mm-hmm. Ajax is a lo- one of eight lower tier municipalities in Durham region. Um, and all that means is that we have two levels of government that and the responsibility for service delivery is sort of um, divided amongst the two tiers. So the upper tier is responsible for things like policing and waste collection, public health, social services, and then, transit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Typically things that have sort of like a region wide application, like something like transit planning obviously has to be done regionally, right? But and then the lower tier has sort of a, a different set of service mandates, things like fire and emergency services, libraries, uh, recreation programs. Right. Um, but it is this, like, I love this question because it's a super interesting time to be thinking about um, lower tiers and upper tiers and it's what true. that model looks like. Uh, we're watching closely the, the dismantling of Peel region, which is, mm-hmm. you know, just to the west of us. Uh, it's fascinating times in local government watching that unfold. And there is also, of course, a little bit of uncertainty around the future of Durham region, York region, right. some of the other regions. So I think we're definitely seeing like a bit of a paradigm shift about, you know, does this model still make sense? Could it be tinkered with? Um, it's it's an how interesting... to deliver services a little bit more efficiently. Yeah. yeah. Do we have duplication? Yeah. So yeah, it's it's interesting times. <laughs> I, I agree. No, and it, it's going to be interesting for the next couple of years for sure. Yeah. And so Nicole, one of the sections of your department is customer service. Mm-hmm. So you know, dealing directly with residents. Can you talk to us a little bit about what probably the most common theme is for calls or inquiries received? Yeah. So the the sort of like big ticket items that we get constantly are things like facility booking, tax inquiries, people calling about their tax bills, inquiries for the building department. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to build a shed. I want to renovate. Do I need a permit, et cetera. And the other big one is parking ticket resolution. Oh, yes. People who got a parking ticket. So those are kind of the the most popular inquiries. But I would also say, like, we get a lot of calls that aren't intended for us um, Mm. for things like waste collection or transit. And it really points to it's funny, this really goes to kind of your question before it points to this concept that people don't necessarily know that that there's two tiers or who delivers what services. And frankly, they don't care. They just they They just want the service done. They just want the service. They want a resolution to their problem. And um, they don't particularly care whether that solution comes from the town of Ajax or the region of Durham. And you know, we're we're really starting to get our heads around this, that we want people to have a good customer experience and not be bopped around to different levels of government trying to find the answers they need. Yeah. Um, and so we're, we've been working with our partners at the region of Durham to try and build some like pathways to connect these service centers a little bit more seamlessly through things like your listeners might have heard that recently Durham region launched the 311 service. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. uh, which just means that within Durham region, people can call 311, they'll get the region of Durham, um, Consolidated Customer Service Center. And if they're looking for something that's a lower tier service, um, we have a a sort of a new understanding and a new protocol with the region that will allow them to flow those calls to us more seamlessly in a way that is like warmer for the customer um, and just allows them to be transferred around fewer times than they would have before. And we continue to work on building integrations with them in technology and just in like general customer service. So there's more to come on this in the coming years, but yeah. So, and I know you said, you know, if somebody was calling the region, but it might be more of a local issue that the Mm -hmm. region could warm transfer to the town. Do Mm -hmm. we have that same capability where if somebody was calling the town directly, we could warm transfer to the region? Yes, we do. Yeah. It's like a a mutual, we have a memorandum of understanding (laughs) with the region to get too boring and technical about it. But yeah, it's it's a two-way street. We want to make sure that, you know, customers that are bound for them, we are treating with that warmth Mm -hmm. and not just, you know, call this number instead. And now I'm going to hang up on you. We actually do warm transfers in both directions. Yeah. Better customer experience. And um, just for the listeners, one more time, if you um, miss the number there, it's 311. So very simple, very quick, very convenient to remember. And Nicole, so we started to talk a little bit about some aspects that make us proud of working for the town earlier here. 
But maybe let's bring it very specific to your department. Um, what's one thing or one story you might have that stands out to you over the past year that makes you proud of your department? So the biggest one that comes to mind is I am immensely proud of how our department has responded to the unsheltered population and the Mm -hmm. crisis that we're dealing with in Ajax around that. So this is primarily engaging our bylaw enforcement division who, you know, up until recently really weren't trained to deal with this level of crisis um, and trained for the types of, you know, things that have now become commonplace. Um, And just the empathy that they have shown, the resilience um, in dealing with some of the most vulnerable vulnerable people in our community. Um, It's just, it really, it's it's a real pride point. Um, We just have some of some of the best bylaw officers I've ever seen with like just big compassionate hearts and um, some of the stuff they see obviously affects them really deeply. But they're Mm -hmm. still in every day doing their job, and it's it's really quite amazing. And I'm sure they're going to be listening to this episode. So I'm sure that'll be wonderful for them to hear that directly from you as well. I hope so. It's really nice too. We have, you know, our members of council, I think, have really noticed the impact that this this particular challenge has had on staff. And mm-hmm. they speak so highly of the way that staff have responded to it. And it, to your point, like it really means a lot to, to feel to, valued, appreciated. Yes. Yes. And just the recognition that like, yeah. maybe this isn't what you signed up for and your job has changed and you've adapted really, really well to it. Right. No, that, that's a that's an amazing story to share. So thank you for that. And switching gears here, and we're getting closer to the end of our episode. Um, but Nicole, like, what's in the works for next year? Is there anything listeners should keep an ear out for? Yeah, let me think of a couple examples here. <laughs> Just one that's kind of tangible. Uh, one thing we'll be rolling out in the coming months is the Track My Plow app. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, people will be able to the nice, shiny new tool where they can <laughs> see where plows are going in the town of Ajax. What else have we got? So we just finished um, our customer service strategy, right? Um, which is going forward to council in the next couple of weeks. And from that will flow a whole bunch of um, improvements in customer experience, one of which will be um, a customer relationship management system, which is a technology project, but it's it's really going to improve the way that we handle customer inquiries, track them, follow up on them, giving people the power to check and see what the status of, of their request is and right. um, follow it through to conclusion. So that's a good customer facing one. On the docket for next year, we're also going to be doing updates to our dog and cat bylaw, which right. is always a popular one. <laughs> These are the bylaws that regulate, you know, how many dogs you can have and, and so on. Right. So <laughs> uh, so we'll be doing some public consultation on that. Um, those are some, I don't know, no, no, no those examples. are examples. Those are great examples for 2024. All right. And Nicole, with that, um, is there any parting thoughts that you have for our listeners? Well, I think, think I would just kind of close off with some thoughts. You know, you asked me a lot during this interview about good governance and we talked about Ajax pride and yeah. things like that. And I guess I would just leave you with the thoughts that the people that live in this town should be really, really proud of the town that they live in. The people that work for the town of Ajax, I think, should be proud of the things that we've accomplished in the last couple of years and the things that are to come. And I would just, you know, encourage any of our listeners who who are out in the community, you know, as an expression of that pride to get involved in local government. It's so rewarding. You know, I'm a municipal clerk, so I should probably put in a plug to vote (laughs) in your next municipal election, which is in 2026. Yeah, that's about it. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Nicole, for your time today and joining us on TOA Talks. Thank you. I'm Devin Jarvis with the Town of Ajax TOA Talks podcast. Episodes can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and on our webpage at ajax.ca slash TOA Talks. Listeners can download and listen to each episode offline or online from their personal device. If you have comments or feedback about our show, you can email corporate at ajax.ca. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk later, Ajax.